Thousands of people explore caves every year and is one of the most dangerous recreational activities you could ever do. I personally would never be caught in a cave, but I myself am a lazy piece of you know what. Now this brings me to the subject of this video. I'm going to tell you about one of the internet's first creepypastas before they were even called creepypastas. This is Ted the Caver. I found Ted the Caver while scouring, you guessed it, Reddit, trying to find something super spooky, and boy did I find it. Now this is a fairly long story and I really suggest you read it. I'll leave the link down in the you know whaty. This will be the Cliff Notes version. It starts out innocently enough with our main guy, Ted, stating that due to a considerable amount of requests, he decided to make a webpage about a mysterious cave that he and his partner B found. He calls him that to protect his identity. Mind you that this dates back to 1230 of 2000. Now you know why this is a super OG creepypasta. Ted says that he'll be updating the page with his written journal entries, as well as giving his thoughts in real time, reflecting on his entries. He also has photos taken by a dang Kodak disposable camera. Oh my god, there's probably people that don't even know what that is. Ted and B decide to get one more shot of adrenaline before the year is over by exploring what they hail as the mystery cave. He states that he hasn't been caving for a while, so he's really excited about this adventure. In this mystery cave, there is an almost hidden passage. It has a tiny opening. There's tons of wind that blows through it. Only strange thing was the sound of rumbling. There's no way either can fit through the opening. So they decide to invest in some tools and drill and chisel their way through the rock. This goes on for a couple of months. The actual trips to the cave span a few days because, you know, these men have lives other than the hole in the rock. As Ted shares his thoughts on his entries, he expresses regret for even going into the cave in the first place. That's right, you guys. This is when it gets horrifying. Things get weird when B decides to bring his dog with them to the cave. After the descent and nearing the undiscovered passage, the Jack Russell Terrier begins to lose its energy and no longer wants to explore, but stick right to B and Ted. As the men proceeded with their aforementioned drilling, B becomes uneasy after hearing a strange noise. A sound of scraping like rock on rock. Ted thinks nothing until he notices that there is no longer wind blowing out the hole. They talk at length about what could be causing these strange events and decide maybe that their hard work is making them delirious and decide to come back another day to finish. I mean, I would have been out of there a long time ago, but hey, to each their own. Time goes on and the men are drilling away. There is nothing until one night as Ted is drilling. He hears a terrifying scream from within the passage. It spooks the men for a bit, but they brush it off as possibly being an animal. I mean, yeah sure, whatever gets you through the day, guys. After a week off, the two friends decide to come back to the mysterious cave and finish what they started. After a bit of drilling, B finally breaks off a large chunk of rock. The men examine the hole, and Ted decides to give it a try. That's right, he's going to squeeze himself into the passage. This part of the story is very effective and claustrophobic. The description of the scraping of his skin on the rock, the tightness of his chest as he inhales, is very well done. After minutes of working himself through the hole, the passage made a gentle right turn to an area described as a squeeze. Since B was a heftier guy, he couldn't fit through the hole, so he stayed behind in case anything went awry. 
Ted, after making his way through the squeeze, notices that the passage is actually looking more like a passage. It opens up a lot more. He can stand up right now and walk around. He notices rock formations and a large singular rock leaning against the wall. After a bit, he starts feeling like he's being watched. And that is when he finds some hieroglyphics. They depict people surrounding a strange symbol. This leads Ted to believe that there is another entrance to the cave. Before he heads back to B, he takes a few pictures. Once they leave the cave, Ted goes to develop those photos. The ones at the hieroglyphics and the strange rock come out useless. They're blurry and and you can't tell what's there. Both B and Ted decide to return to the cave with a third person who can actually explore the passage with Ted. It's a couple of days until they find a third wheel, a guy that they call Joe. They don't tell Joe about any of the strange experiences they had. Heck, they don't even tell him where the cave is. If I was Joe, I would be worried that these guys were going to murder me. The three men make their way through the cave and over to the passage. Ted and Joe get ready and enter the chiseled hole. Joe goes in first and Ted goes after. Joe is actually making his way through the hole rather quick as Ted took his time. As Ted lifts his head to pull his gear through, his skull meets the rock. He begins to bleed and feel disoriented. All this time, Joe is already out of sight and possibly exploring the passage. Ted can't proceed and decides to make his way back over to B in the first aid kit. As Joe is still in there, B and Ted talk about getting a motel and coming back the next day. They call out to Joe but get no response. After a couple more minutes, they try again and still there's nothing. They begin to get worried and Ted decides to just go in after him. But once he puts his head in the passage, they see a light. Joe! They call out. No answer. The light gets closer. And closer. Joe! They yell again. And still, he doesn't say anything. The light gets closer. It's Joe. But he looks terrible. He's pale, scraped up, and his eyes are wide open. He looks terrified. The men get everything together and just leave. Joe doesn't say a word, and needless to say, they don't return the following day. It's been about two weeks, and after no word from Joe, B and Ted decide to return to the cave. I know these guys have a death wish. Ted reflects on how the cave represented a culmination of all their hard work. It consumed them for four months of their lives. There could also be some type of presence that is keeping our protagonist from coming back to the cave. This time they bring a low voltage two way phone. That way B and Ted can communicate while Ted goes through the passage. Ted notices a feeling when at the entrance to the cave. He does not want to go inside, but he pushes it aside and enters. The men get to the passage and set up the phone, and Ted decides to bring his camera. Ted slides his way through the tunnel and the squeeze and gets to the area of the hieroglyphics. He notices the passage goes on further from there and phones B to let him know. He passes the round rock and gets a strange feeling again. But again, he presses on. As he proceeds, he hears a loud scraping sound behind him. The rock on rock sound. But this time it's louder and closer than ever. He turns to face the direction of the noise and hits his headlamp on the rock, breaking it. He's left in the dark. He sets the camera down, looking for glow sticks. After cracking them, he tosses one in the direction of where the sound was. Luckily, there's nothing there. He uses the light from the glow sticks to locate the phone. 
He tries to ring B, but there is nothing. He then decides to go back even though that's where the noise came from. That is when he sees the large round rock again. And it has moved. A whole new passage is revealed. Fear envelops Ted, and he rushes to the exit, leaving almost everything behind. He claws his way through the passage, crying out to B to just get everything together and leave. That there is something in the cave with them. As Ted is in the middle of pulling himself out of the hole, a stench of rotting flesh blows out along with him. The men begin to climb to exit the cave when something begins to tug on the rope. It comes to a head when B has to cut the rope before whatever was down there climbed over to them. The two exit the cave injured and frightened, neither saying a word on the drive home. The next update we get is about half a month later. Ted reflects on the experience and his condition. At the time, there was many people messaging him about his experience. He states that he is okay and he hadn't spoken with B since the last trip. Ted has been depressed and full of anxiety. Then, things got really strange. He began to see figures in the corner of his eye. Then sounds like footsteps, creaking, shuffling, so much so that he decided to buy a gun. It isn't until he sees a dark figure in front of him when he decides to leave and head to a random spot. He has the overwhelming need to go there. Once he arrives, he sees that someone is there as well. It's Joe. Joe states that they need to return and Ted agrees. That same night, Ted visits B. Every light in his house is on. Ted tells him that he ran into Joe and they decided to go back to the cave tomorrow. B nods his head and tells Ted that he can stay the night so they can leave in the morning. We then have Ted write about preparing for the trip, how much he's afraid to go back and how this has to be done, or else the fear will overtake him. This appears to be the only way. They must return. He ends his thoughts stating that he'll return with an update. See you all soon, with a lot of answers. Love, Ted. And that's it. That is the last update on his page. The absolute dread you feel knowing that there will never be closure or an answer to this mysterious cave is so awful, knowing that maybe they were trapped and they're still stuck there till this day. There is an alternate ending written by someone else, but it's just bad. I think leaving it open like this just adds to the horror of Ted the Caver. I hope you guys enjoy the terror of Ted the Caver. I have the link to the page in the description. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate you all. I hope you subscribe if you're new here. Take care, everyone.